understand this, everything is moving in the direction that the Bible says it's moving in. Jesus is coming and we've got a lot to be excited about. There's going to come a time of reckoning and that reckoning is coming soon. Well, hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to another episode of Countdown to Eternity. And boy, we are living in some exciting times. I am with the great Don Stewart, and there is a lot going on. Don, first of all, how are you, my dear brother? And what is the latest and greatest? Well, I'm doing really well, James. Thank you. I've, I just hit my six month anniversary from my heart attack. And uh, it's very nice that I've, I've passed the six months. I'm still alive and getting better every day. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the ministry, how it's going, working on new projects, and just uh, thankful to be working with you and that uh, I'm just, God is good. I, God is very good. And, you know, I really am grateful for the support that people have been giving you during this time. It's been wonderful, yeah. and yeah. we want to encourage you to continue to support Don by going to educatingourworld.com. He is giving to us some real beautiful uh, works of art in a lot of the writings that he's been doing. There's a uh, new appendix that he has written that deals with um, how we look at uh, traditions and what we do with those traditions and how we interpret certain things, especially with respect to end times. Um, it, it's phenomenal. The work is just unbelievable. Maybe you want to talk about that new appendix real quick? Yeah, real quickly. Basically, how do we deal with customs and uh, traditions that people, you know, have that are recorded in the Bible with respect to understanding what it's trying to teach us. And I think one of the things, and I'm actually doing a lot more with respect to that. I'll talk about that uh, in our program uh, tomorrow, then the next Tuesday. Well, tomorrow, actually, we this will come out on Wednesday. Um, basically, James, here's the problem that people often forget. There's two types of things recorded in the Bible things that are prescriptive, which God commands us to do, but things that are descriptive, which he just tells us what people did. And people often make the mistake when he describes something, they assume that's some type of command. No, unless God says, do it, you know, we don't. So people made the mistake of that in understanding certain traditions, this and that. So it's an appendix there. It's on our website, educatingworld.com to our book, God Wants Us to Know the Future. And there's plenty more coming on that line too. And also too, I've got another new book. It's on the three J's. It's uh, it's called God's Divine Appointments. That's also highlighted there too. It's Joseph, Judah, and Jonah showing God working the supernatural in the natural realm. In other words, the everyday events, divine appointments where uh, things happen. And we look back and say, hey, that was the Lord. So anyway, that's what we're working on. I think that's going to be a very exciting book. I did not yep. know that that one was in the works. And you guys have heard it right here before anywhere else. It's an awesome <laughs> thing. And I think that'll be great. Um, so, bro, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. We are watching some real developments in Israel, in Europe, yep. uh, all over the world. Let's talk about some of that. Yeah, let's take Israel first. Okay, remember where we left last time, the coalition. Uh, they were about to dissolve the parliament. Well, guess what? Like we said, coalition lives to see another day as Islamist party decides it will stay in the government. In other words, they recognize, they, they huff and puff, and they say, we're going to leave the government. But you know, the second they leave, James, they have no more power anymore, no more authority. And what they do there is coerce the powers that be now, the present basically center-left government of Naftali Bennett to knuckle under on certain things. And they're getting their way on a lot of interesting things. In fact, there was a story the other day that basically said either our way or the highway uh, with respect to the Temple Mount. And that was really interesting about don't let the settlers come up anymore. Don't let any more this or that happen there. We'll see where that all goes. But see, if they pull the plug on Bennett, Ben will never see the light of day or his party or these people either. But the problem is neither will these guys, these these different Muslim parties. So it's going to be it's real interesting to see. So they decide to stay in the new government. And so we, we kind of knew that, predicted that. But, you know, they made a big deal. They're going to leave. Oh, it's all going to be over. New elections. And then all of a sudden, no, they're not. Yeah, and it is interesting how it highlights the unique instability or unstable nature of what we're actually seeing over there. And um, I think that uh, when it really comes down to it, Ra'am just showed its weakness and basically demonstrated to the whole world that they know that they completely lose their voice if they choose to walk away from this coalition because they will never again be able to be a part of any other coalition uh, government that forms. And when Israel, in essence, goes to its 30 
37th or, or 38th government. Um, they won't be a part of it. And so they're going to take advantage of what they can right now, which again fits the narrative for what we know pushes us into the direction of what the Bible says is going to end up happening. And so it makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, it does. And so you're right. There's there's going to be, there has to be a weakness in Israel at the time of the end. And that's precisely what we're seeing with a very, very weak government. Remember we said two years ago, a weak Israeli government, a United States, a non-player and a strong Russia. And none of them were happening, were they, two years ago? No, but, not one bit. <laughs> but the Bible assumed they would. And here we are. And all of this is happening right now, just as the Bible said. Now, there's another story, James. We've talked about similar things like this before. And this is also from the Middle East. It says, bold and historic conference in Saudi Arabia brings together leaders of several faiths for the first time in the kingdom. Hosted by Muslim World League, sessions were aimed to build bridges between leaders of all faith, all Arab news to feature several firsthand accounts and columns this week. Now, you know, that all sounds well and good, but what always happens in this situation, James, is that the Christians, the evangelicals, the Bible believers, they're the ones that compromise, aren't they? They're the ones that knuckle under because they can't just stand and say one way to get to the one God or else they'll be shown the door, right? So they have to compromise. I, I hate to say it, but you know th these things never work, do they? No. And this is the formation of what we see, or at least the spirit of what we'll see when we watch the rise of Babylon as it's described yeah. in Revelation, right? This is right. something that we know is going to happen and a big part of the culture in uh, this upcoming uh, Babylonian empire, for lack of a better term, right? right? One of the greatest associations made with uh, physical Babylon is this idea that there will be a form of ecumenicalism that really is indicative of spiritual fornication, right? The kind right. of adultery that we know is going to take place before for the Lord, where people will turn their backs on the true and living God in the name of some false unity and false security, which in essence will be destroyed by the Antichrist and then eventually by God himself. So it's very interesting to think about where that's going. And um, it, it reeks of uh, the Revelation 17 territory that we continue to look at. Yeah, big time, because it's compromised, because it, it may be well-meaning on some people's behalf, James, but you know very well, well-meaning and working in the real world are two different things. There's no way on earth this is going to happen. It can, it can come to pass and things like that. Now, we do, obviously, we engage our friends who are in other religions. We talk to them. We want to bring them to Christ. But when you start working together on projects, that's where the... Uh, proverbial rubber meets the road where just it just doesn't work it can't work if you're really preaching the gospel of christ now yeah, here's agree. back to the middle east here's another big story did you see this one report russians fire on israeli air force craft in syria for the first time s-300 battery which can only be operated by russian officers reportedly launches missiles at israeli air force planes operating in syria so I have to hear more about this. This is the first I've, I've read this. I think you had just sent it to me before yeah, we started the show. Mm -hmm. What are the circumstances on it? Was it a shot off the bow type of a thing? Or was Israel in the midst of some kind of an aggressive action against Syria? Um, what do you know about this? Because this is very interesting to me. Well, here's what it says. According to the report, while the missile was filed, fired from the S-300 battery, the missile did not achieve a radar lock on any of the Israeli aircraft and did not pose a threat. All aircraft returned to Israel safely. So you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a shot over the bow because Israel has finally, to some degree, stood up against Russia with what they've done in the Ukraine. And Russia has been very, very unhappy with that. And so it's like, oh, you're going to not like what we're doing in, in the Ukraine, are you? Well, look what we can do to you. And so, you know, again, they didn't lock on to the aircrafts, which is one thing, you know, but they did shoot towards them. And it, it, it sounds like to me, just kind of like a warning thing, what they're trying to tell them that, look, just stay, <laughs> stay out of this. And uh, please be not, not on the side of, uh, you know, the uh, Ukrainians or the West and something like this. So it's really interesting. I think it is. And again, I mean, it, it, look, a lot of this goes back to what we know will be leading into this coalition that is going to come against uh, Israel. Right. Um, this It sort of uh, prepares the ground for it all. And again, it goes back to the stronger Russia, the weaker yep. Israel, and of course, uh, the sort of inconsequential voice of the United States of America. Um, had this been a few years ago, 
America would have responded swiftly uh, with an action like that. And Israel would have responded by destroying the battery. Um, So it's just interesting to see how things have changed so quickly. Yeah. And so, again, like we said, we know from Scripture there is a general assumption. Israel will be weak. Russia will be strong. The U.S. will be basically non-existent. And and Western Europe won't have any power at this time either. So this is exactly what we've seen fall into place. Just like the Bible says. So uh, as we keep saying, James, stay tuned, right? Who knows what's going to happen next? Yeah, amen to that. And I, I just think about this, and I'm I'm literally blown away by the variables involved in what we're actually seeing. And I think it's uh, I think it's completely crazy. Uh, yeah. It also goes to show that we should not be surprised about any of this, uh, yeah. right? Um, yeah. There is a historic... Uh, situation I think that's also beginning to develop. And that is what we're looking at in the United States with respect to the uh, absence of diesel fuel. We're looking at uh, baby formula going away. um, And we're seeing all kinds of other economic indicators that tell us we are approaching a famine-like situation very quickly. And the economy of the United States is destabilizing. Um, What does that mean? What, What do we make of all of this, bro? Yeah, it's interesting to say that because that's the story I locked on to next. And basically to reiterate, here's what the headline says. This is from Zero, uh, Zero Hedge. Uh, now we're being told to expect food and diesel so- shortages for the foreseeable future. If you think that the food and diesel shortages are bad now, then you will be absolutely horrified by what the globe is experiencing by the end of the year. All over the planet, food production is being crippled by an unprecedented confluence of factors. Talks about the war in Ukraine. You've got bizarre weather going on, patterns, plagues, historic fertilizer fertilizer crisis. It's the perfect storm that won't go away soon. It's precisely the things, again, Jay, we're not prophets or sons of prophets. We've been predicting. The world has to be in a chaotic situation. The world cannot be doing great because there's a need for a world ruler to arise and to straighten out all the problems. And what it's telling us, and again, it shows the demise of the United States. You've got the, uh, the, the not only the diesel shortage, like you said, the baby food shortage. They don't seem to be wanting to do anything about it. And then, uh, you know, all the first it was the abortion thing, you know, all the headlines are in the U.S. on Roe v. Wade. Now you've got white supremacy supposedly back again in the headlines. So it's the U.S. It's it's so sad. And at the same time, James, we see stories, too, where basically the whole idea of, um, you know, shutting us up, of uh, keeping us from speaking and saying, you know, anything it's just, um, it's getting worse and worse and worse. There was a story about this uh, new woman who is the head of the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the truth squad there with the uh, Biden administration. Basically, they had actually, you know, put a trial balloon forward saying something to the effect that, well, because of the disinformation there, what we want to do is edit people's tweets to get it right. Now, oh, yeah. Did you ever, yeah, yeah. Can you ever think you see this day? Yeah. It's 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 terrible. It's terrible. I did a video on this on Monday uh, where I actually talked about this and I got a lot of views. A lot I'll of people <laughs> watched it because the reality of it is, and I really I don't say this term lightly. I think this woman is filled with darkness. Yes, I, I, I think she is a person that represents terrible evil. Um, and, and the reality of it is we're allowing it. We're not doing it. Well, I guess we are by not, uh, you know, letting our voices out. But um, this is a spiritual battle, and uh, yeah. this woman is uh, absolutely terrible. She's yeah. absolutely terrible. It's yeah. uh, it's amazing, and I've never thought anything could get to the point where it's this bad. And she hates people yeah. that are conservative. She hates the voices that represent Christ and defend children. Um, it's it's just it's bad. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting too, James, just like scripture said, it's going to be perilous times, particularly for Bible believers in the last days, for Jews also too, because there's going to be this attack on the Christian faith, on what's right. And uh, this woman is leading the charge in that. And so you've got that going on, you know, the, the censorship. But on the other hand, like you said, this is a sad story. Did you, I don't know if you read this, it said one young couple in Florida searched for four hours in several stores for baby formula for their five-month-old twins, and all they found were empty shelves. Now, if that isn't a crisis, I don't know what is. 
Yeah, and um, this is really bad because now it's getting to the point where people are buying baby formula online. It hasn't hit the West Coast as hard yet, but on the East Coast, people are buying baby formula for $150 online, Don. Whoa, People whoa. are taking advantage of it. It's it's totally crazy. And the problem is, is there are parents that are not going to be able to feed their children, and there are some children that are very, very dependent upon that kind of uh, material because it's the only thing that their body will be able to actually digest. There are some kids that have some serious disorders and some other problems where they heavily depend upon this baby formula. And uh, unfortunately, that's a direction that things are going in. And the Biden administration not only doesn't care about it, but this regime is actually laughing at it. They're mocking and they're making jokes about it. It's absolutely terrible. Well, let me go you one further than that. The Biden administration has made sure there is enough baby formula for migrants that are illegally crossing the border. They don't have a problem getting it. Uh, is, this uh, a ser- is this a serious? It's a real story? This is a, real, this is a zero hedge story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me send it to you here. Oh, think, yeah. Can you my imagine? I goodness. Mean, can, yeah. And so what they're doing, uh, the food shortages are here. It's just, it's halfway down right be, behind the below the pictures there. The guy said, if you told me six months ago, we'd be dealing with the worst baby formula shortage in U.S. history in the middle of 22. I'm sure I wouldn't believe you. And he got these horror stories of people uh, here, one in uh, Washington state, it looks like, one in central Florida. Uh, maybe they're both, maybe they're, like you said, they're on the East Coast here. But the point is, um, it talks about, and you got the big bold lettering. It's an utter nightmare. And I've read a couple stories on this, that they're making sure the formula is available for the migrants, well, they don't, they say migrants, for the illegals crossing the border, the border. We got it for them and their kids, but not for the tax paying Americans. That is terrible. And I'm looking at some of this right now online and I can't believe what I'm seeing. That is just completely crazy. What is wrong with them? I, I, that is, that's unfathomable to me. Yeah. And also what's the fallout from this? You go a little further, things have gotten so bad that major supermarket chains have decided to post armed guards in their stores because people are coming in and stealing it uh, when they've got it because as prices are spiraling out of control. They'll spe- uh, steal it so they can sell it on the black market, too. So that's kind of what we're, that's what we're living. It's almost, you know, it's like total anarchy seemingly going on with this administration with everywhere we look, but you don't see it in the major media, do you? You don't hear it, but, but people are hurt. They're hurting bad. The Gas prices today hit a historic high. You saw what happened last week with the stock market, you know. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you another thing, like the what's really interesting, I'd like to get your thoughts on the uh, all the all the uh, uh, cryptocurrency that just went 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 down in the toilet, like Bitcoin and this one uh, group that basically was, was worth $40 billion last year. Now their now their stock is worth one eighth of a cent. Uh, yeah, and this is this is terrible. But look, you have to understand, we kind of predicted this, right? We right, talked I know. about this, that they would do whatever they could to tank this type of cryptocurrency right. the same way they've been seeking to tank cash because they want nothing that is not centrally traceable, right? Correct. And Correct. so there is a new form of uh, cryptocurrency that exists that will be fully centralized, fully traceable, fully controlled based on their fiat es- establishment. Right as opposed to the dictates of the market. And um, this is just something that we knew would happen. Yeah. In other words, it's a digital currency, but government controlled. In other that's words, correct. so they know they know every uh, transaction that's being made because they can't let it be doing surreptitiously. That's why when people ask, should I invest in the cryptocurrency? We say, no, digital currency is where it's at. But unfortunately, it's going to be government controlled. It's like in China. So they see every transaction. That's the whole idea behind Revelation 13, right? It makes well, sense. You can't buy or sell without a, without a mark because everybody is going to be monitored worldwide. <laughs> And the other thing that it will do is it gives them the ability to de- uh, really devalue the currency on Correct. a whim, right? Yep. So something happens and people are figuring out different bartering mechanisms to pull um, and to avoid the centralization of uh, uh, sort of this big, massive uh, database where people are buying your stuff. Well, then what will end up happening is they'll d- end up devaluing the currency, forcing everybody into the same spot and then bringing everybody back into compliance. It's exactly how that works. Yep. And <coughs> this is all Revelation 13. Yeah, very much so. And so what's interesting, and you said it earlier, James, we need to k- repeat this. We always have new 
viewers, new listeners. And one of the things we continue to say is that it's not just one or two things that are coming together. Things are coming together worldwide, whether it be globally in the Middle East, which is Israel, Russia, uh, Europe, the United States, but also economically with respect to our, you know, the censorship with our freedoms, this and that, uh, the persecution of both Christians and Jews as we get closer to the time of the end. Everything is falling into place from so many different levels. Levels. The pattern is so ob- it should be obvious to all that what God has warned us about is taking place right in front of our very eyes. Yeah, and God is doing such a spectacular job at demonstrating to us how accurate His Word is as we examine these things. And it kind of brings me up, uh, brings me to a place of me wanting to ask you about something that I didn't sure. tell you I was going to ask you about. I'm just okay. going to put you straight on the spot, Go but ahead. I do think it's important because. A few days ago, um, if you were fortunate enough to look up in the sky, we witnessed one of the most spectacular full lunar eclipses that we have in a very long time. Right. Um, it's a blood moon based on the location uh, or the time of year that it is. It was a very slow eclipse uh, going to its place. I watched it at every stage. It was absolutely spectacular. But there are a lot of people at this time that will come out and say, there's a blood moon. They start talking about Shemitah yep. cycles and all of this stuff. And um, they want to know if this is something that is in the prophetic calendar and is it an indicator that we should be using. And they oftentimes base this on Joel and other passages like this. Um, can you address that for a second as we close up? Yeah, I'd love to. Actually, I've written on this in our book, God Wants Us to Know the Future, what we don't look at. In fact, I, I when I did the thing on the uh, customs and that, I, I said there's certain things we don't want to look at that'll lead us the wrong direction, and that's signs in the heavens, such as the great sign in Revelation 12 and the so-called blood moons. Because, first of all, it's one blood moon that's going to happen during the Great Tribulation period, but the sun's going to turn black, too. It's not just the moon into blood. But also, too, it's a, the signs in the heavens aren't for this age. They're for the, the final seven-year period, the 70th week of Daniel, the Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. And so uh, they're not signs for the church age, and people make the mistake by saying Saying this, we've had predictions in the past. Uh, 2017, the great sign in heaven was going to take place. The blood moons that was very popular a number of years back. It's, it, it portended the signs of the end. Well, what did it mean? I, I used to ask people, what What does it mean? Well, it means we're getting near the end. Well, we're getting near the end because we see this other signs that are very clearly spelled out. What's it telling us? No. Uh, We don't look to the heavens now. We look to the one who made the heavens, James. We look to the one who is the creator of that. And right now, living in the age that you and I live in, uh, there are not signs in the heavens. Again, the signs of the heavens will take place. Revelation 6 through 18, we'll see those at the time. So anyway, in the book, uh, God Wants to Know the Future, we talk about this. Uh, what not to do, and you don't look for astronomical signs and try and make uh, you know conclusions based on that to assume we're at the time of the end or, or start setting dates like people did with the fig tree and all that. It's just things we should not do. Yeah, and I completely agree with you. I mean, when you even look at Matthew 24, Jesus gives us a very direct picture of what signs we ought to look for. And the one sign that he mentions, the first sign, the sign that he ties to this generation, not passing until the coming of the Son of Man happens, is the abomination that causes desolate. We won't even be here at that point. So it's a very interesting thing. Don, we've got about 30 seconds. Uh, You want to close us up? Sure. Uh, Again, as we say, the signs are there. God is speaking. Are we listening? Countdown to eternity is a means to an end, showing you that things are happening in our world today that fulfill last day's Bible prophecy, only happening now. They hadn't happened in the past. Now, all coming together as a culmination to show us that we're living in a very exciting time. So the key for each and everybody watching or listening is be ready because the Lord is speaking. He's showing us these things. You can't make this stuff up. So hopefully you're ready to meet your maker because he could be coming at any time. Amen and amen. And there is nothing that I can add to that except look up because Jesus is coming soon and we have a lot to be excited about. So with that, we do want to thank you guys and acknowledge the fact that you don't have to listen to us yet you choose to. We are humbled by it. Uh, We are blessed that you bring us into your lives, into your living rooms, your drives, um, sometimes on the train ride. uh, But either way, we are so grateful to be a part of your lives. 
We know that Jesus is coming soon. It is time to look up. So on behalf of the great Don Stewart, this is James Cadiz. We hope you enjoyed listening to this as much as, of course, we have enjoyed making it. May God richly bless you as we count down to eternity and look to him because Jesus is coming soon. God bless you guys. We love you so much. Thanks for joining us, but don't click away just yet. If you want to catch previous episodes, you can find them on countdown the number 2 eternity.com or listen on your favorite podcast app. Visit educatingourworld.com for additional resources that Pastor Don Stewart has available, such as Ancient Mysteries of the Bible Solved, What Happens One Second After We Die, and all other titles are completely free to download. Before you go, follow James Cadiz on Instagram and Rumble. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube at Calvary Chapel Signal Hill. Countdown to Eternity is listener supported. Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you.